we have our new concept of work, and it might be a little bit scary with this dot product and two different vectors. So very often we represent it with this scalar form, which is the magnitude of the force times the magnitude of this ds times the cosine of the angle between them. And since it's a physics integral, we always have to have it be a definite integral. I want to introduce another way of thinking about this dot product. And the dot product is really just representing, at least in Cartesian coordinates, right, a summation of all of the different parallel directions. So it would be fx dx from x initial to x final plus the integral of fy dy from y initial to y final plus the integral of fz dz from z initial to z final. And the reason we don't see this very often is because it takes up a lot of space. It takes a long time to write. But as we're learning, it feels nice to have this. So let's find the work from a couple of forces that do give us a nice, easy calculation of this work. So gravity is always a great case to start out with. Our gravity in a general sense is going to be mg in the negative j hat direction. So because we're still learning, we might want to try it from this thing. Can I write the force of gravity in the x direction? Well, that should be 0, right? Force of gravity doesn't work in the x direction. Force of gravity in the y direction will be negative mg. And force of gravity in the z direction will be 0. So now I can look at this work, and I will get the integral from x initial to x final of 0 dx plus the integral of negative mg dy from y initial to y final plus the integral from z initial to z final of 0 dz. OK, so with this then, a definite integral of 0 is 0. So we can nicely and easily cross this off for ourselves. And same, right, the definite integral of 0 is 0. So we get two zeros right here. And our work then, we can pull this negative mg out. So we have negative mg, the integral of dy from yi to yf. And this is about as easy of an integral as we can get which gives us that our work from our gravity is negative mg yf minus yi. So that's how we calculate work, right, as we can do that. Let's have another example. Let's look at springs. If we have our spring force from Hooke's law, our Hooke's law said that the force from a spring is equal to negative kx in its direction. So we can say then, I have. Well, if that's the case, then our work, we only have to worry about this x direction, so we won't have to do this nonsense too many times. And so we have negative kx dx, which we can write as negative k integral of x dx, from x initial to x final. This integral hopefully is one of the first and few that you've done. Integral of x dx should be x squared over 2. And then we just need to evaluate it from its initial and final states. So I will pull the 2 out to be a 1 half. We still have our k. We still have our negative. And then we have x squared final minus x squared initial. And that is our work from springs. So we have one last example that we can work with, and it's a little bit more of just kind of talking ourselves through it. But this is the normal force. And so for our normal force, we can look at either flat ground or we can look at some interesting curves as we go up. And as we're looking at this, we can take a look at our box as it moves along this floor and then as it moves along this somewhat interesting surface. As we move along this floor, our ds, or what we're doing, is going to be always parallel to the floor where we're at. So that this is our ds. But our normal force, we know, must be perpendicular 
to the surface at any point. So this is our normal force. Normal force. And if we look at this, we can do fx dx, fy dy, fz dz, but it might be more interesting and useful to use this one. Here this cosine theta is the angle between all of them, but we can take a look at this angle. This angle here is 90 degrees. Here is 90 degrees, 90 degrees, 90 degrees. Right, it's just the definition of having to be perpendicular versus having to be parallel. So we have that our cosine theta is equal to cosine of 90 degrees for all of our cases. If that's the case, if it's always 90 degrees, then this cosine of 90 degrees is always zero. So then the work is zero for our normal force. So here we have three different cases of gravity, springs, and normal force. And as we discover other forces, we'll keep filling out and finding the work and eventually potential energy from all of them.